but one thing I did notice having now been in a pharmaceutical industry is there's a huge lack of awareness and understanding of what other routes there are available in the pharmaceutical industry and having met other pharmacists who have who are in the pharmaceutical industry has really helped to reaffirm that for me and, make, and really highlight how big of an issue it is because they've all had a very they've had, they found it one very hard to get into the pharmaceutical industry and two um, they also get they once they get in they have this realization like wow they're not more pharmacists in the pharmaceutical industry why is it so hard um, why is there why do not many people know about these options why is the university why during our university years is it so um, so 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 hard driven towards hospital or community what about the other aspects and the other areas of, of the whole drug development <laughs> My name is Toby Adiemi. Um, I am a pharmacist by background, um, but I work in medical affairs in the pharmaceutical industry. So I studied pharmacy, which is a four year degree. It's an integrated master's. So at the end of it, everyone who studies pharmacy comes out with an M Pharm, which is master's of pharmacy. Um, during my degree, I was able I was able to take advantage of things like Erasmus, and I went to France for um, the summer, where I did my thesis, or final year project, or dissertation, or whatever the university calls it nowadays. Um, I, I also I was also fortunate to um, be put into contact with a very local pharmaceutical company. Um, and working their sort of compliance and regulatory affairs department, which helped to give me my first initial insight into what the pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical industry is like. I've been in sort of pharmacy world for three years, and I've been in the pharmaceutical industry for two years. As a practicing pharmacist, you typically would work either in the community, so for example, Boots, Lloyds, or your local independent pharmacy, community pharmacy, or you'll work in a hospital. Um, but the pharmaceutical industry is, uh, is, a, is a, a sector of the life sciences industry, uh, which helps with healthcare, helps inform in healthcare, helps to provide treatments and options for health in healthcare. But your role may not be specific to you being a pharmacist. So for example, a pharmacist could go and work in the life sciences industry or in the pharmaceutical industry in marketing, for example, or in health economics or various other aspects of the of various other functions. So being a pharmacist is not necessarily a requirement to work in a pharmaceutical industry, whereas being a pharmacist to work, being a pharmacist to work in Boots or Lloyd's or an independent pharmacy or in a hospital as a pharmacist, you need to be a pharmacist to do that. So I didn't actually want to do pharmacy, if I'm being completely honest. I kind of fell into it. Um, I moved to a sixth form, which was different to the school I actually went to. And I intended to apply to be uh, to do medicine, like a lot of people do. And the sixth form I went to, they kind of came up with this excuse that they weren't, they didn't, they couldn't, they were not sure of my academic ability, and therefore they would encourage me, no, they would advise me to either take a gap year, do my A levels, and then apply with my full A levels, or to choose a, a different degree and um, apply to that, do that for a year, and then move on to uh, then apply to um, medicine. So I didn't like I didn't like the idea of an, a gap year at the time didn't appeal to me. Um, so I decided to look for what would what things do I like in medicine that I could probably get from another. To, to apply for medicine, the sixth form had to back your application, and because they had a certain track record for the amount of people that they had gotten into med, med school, they were very very picky with who they allowed to um, to apply for that. So. Being mindful of that, I didn't really want to delay my journey to university because of them, and so forth. So I went for what I thought would have been the next best option. I've been fortunate to find a job where I enjoy what I do, and the skills I learned in my journey as a pharmacist helped to um, help to. So I think what I thought is I took it back. I thought, why do I actually want to apply to medicine? And there was an aspect of, you know, cultural influence, you know, shout out to moms and dads, mama and papa, uh, mumsy. Um, but I would say that 
what I thought is okay. What is it that, that I like? Is it the chemistry? Is it the biology? Is it the maths aspects? Like which of the of the three is it that I really like? Because that's what those are the A levels I was studying at the time. Um, so I I really enjoyed biology, but I really 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 enjoyed chemistry, and I thought that um, having looked at the syllabus initially, it seemed as though studying pharmacy would have helped led me to do that, and then use those skills in a more clinical setting. It's so very similar if I went to the hospital route, which is my which is where I ended up. Uh, where you do your your pre-registration year or your training, sorry, it doesn't negate you from going into the other side of the farm of being a pharmacist. So if you do it in the community, it's very still very possible to go and do it, uh, go and work in the hospital pharmacy. Um, it is slightly harder. Um, I say slightly because it's dependent on each individual hospital, but a lot of people have made that transition. Um, they do kind of make you feel like, oh my God, it's near enough impossible, but it's not. It's, there, it's very possible, but just slightly harder. It might take you a little bit longer uh, than going from community to hospital than it would take you from going from hospital to community. It is true. Community pharmacists, they got that. They got that money. Got the bag. Um, yeah, so the community, community pharmacy typically does pay more. Um, so community pharmacy starts, you start off, um, after after you've qualified as a pharmacy, you start off quite well, quite nice, um, and then the progression is quite, you know, it's, it's quite it's quite generous, um, have, and that's from speaking from some of my friends who have taken that route. Uh, being a hospital pharmacist, um, the pay starts sort of competitive, I would say. Uh, it doesn't grow so your your salary doesn't grow so quickly with experience. Another option you can always do is you can be you can locum. And locum is just basically you're freelancing as a pharmacist, so you could do that in community pharmacy, you could do that in a hospital, and you just go from either community pharmacy to community pharmacy and do um, some shifts just covering, or you could be doing it in a hospital. So in those roles, it's, it's, it's equivalent to being a contractor in, um, for example, the finance sector or in the pharmaceutical industry or any other industry. <clears throat> Don't quote me, but from what I can remember, I think during the training year in community is around 18,000, um, between 18 and 20, I think. And then in the hospital, it's around 22 or 21. So you do that for a year. And then after that, in hospital, if you're outside of London, um, you'll go up to about 28 or 29, I think. Uh, if you're in London, I think it's 30 or just over 30. Um, and then in hospital. But if you're in community, you could be looking at, I think, 30 between 34 and 36, depending on the store that you're in and what the situation is. Um, I've heard of some really unique, interesting cases of people seeing a lot more than that, one year, two years after being a community pharmacist. But those situations are dependent on maybe the, the area. If you're in a, in a highly populated area, um, everyone tends to be in a sort of a similar sort of range. And then as your skill, as you build up your skill set and other qualifications, um, you tend to see extra increments added to your um, package. What I didn't like about it is that a lot of the times now it's very, it's, it's a business. That's, that's basically what it is, it's a business. Um, there's healthcare, but then the, the sort of umbrella around it is a business. You need to make money to keep the lights on, to keep it going. So a lot of it is, is very fast paced, it's very go, 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 go. There's no rest for the wicked. And another problem is that sometimes, as a, as a result of this, you can find places can, can be quite um, under, under-resourced, understaffed, and overworked. That was a common sort of situation that would um, always happen when I talked to a lot of different pharmacists who were community pharmacists. And that didn't appeal to me. I like my quality of life. Um, so I did a two week placement um, just after I applied. Uh, I'd made all my choices and I thought, let me do a quick placement, you know, get a flavor for what potentially could be, you know, the rest of my life, maybe, who knows. So I, I worked in the boots not too far from where I was living at the time <clears throat> with an uncle. It's not my uncle, but you know, he's an uncle. Um, and it was, I was supposed to do it for two weeks. I did it for three days. I didn't return. Even though I didn't like that aspect of pharmacy, it did kind of give me a flavor and more drive to make sure, okay, cool, I know I don't like that side. So therefore, it gave me more drive to go towards the hospital setting and made sure that I could really, really um, prepare myself for such an early stage. So this is before I even got to university. I'm already thinking, okay, I need to go to a hospital because I know I don't like being in a community pharmacy. Um, but on top of that, it also helped me to think what else could, I, could my 
could my course do outside of just being a normal ph the usual pharmacist um, because in university and up until university uh, the awareness of the particular path routes that you can take with a degree like pharmacy or just any science related degree is not clearly understood so it kind of made sure that from then I was sort of keeping an eye out for what other things could I do that were still related with still within the science or healthcare space but not just your typical job that everybody knew of for example and about and then through that journey I eventually found out about medical affairs So the expectations of my course were that um, it'd be primarily chemistry and a mix of, a good mix of um, chemistry and biology, human biology, um, and a very very light hint of mathematics, but it wasn't. So maths was something that was very pre prevalent every year, and we regularly had maths exams or mental arithmetic exams every year, which you had to pass, and statistics as well. Um, there was a lot around how to read clinical papers, um, critically, critically appraising papers, um, a lot around um, clinical trials, uh, or actually mm, a tiny bit around clinical trials, a tiny, to, a tiny bit around the pharmaceutical industry, and more of it was more geared towards um, either working in the community pharmacy or in a hospital setting. So that's kind of where, my, where it was focused, so like the on-the-job sort of skills of vocational um, aspects of the job that they taught. We did like a few placements in hospital, or we did a few placements um, in a community pharmacy, or we did things like uh, uh, what they called a multidisciplinary team um, project where we went, went to the University of South, Southampton and where they do medicine and uh, we met a few doctors from there, brought some pharmacists from our course, brought, brought some nurses from another course or another uni and we all came together to do one project and the whole idea is to, to get used to working with people from other um, other professions within healthcare all aligned to the same goal um, so th those were the sort of aspects that I was not aware of um, so what I actually got to do in my degree versus what I thought I was going to do was very different so <clears throat> by the time I got to my last year my fourth year um, I was quite sure that I wanted to do hospital pharmacy and I had secured a place at a, uh, at a hospital in um, Surrey uh, to do my training so I was under the impression that um, being a hospital pharmacist meant that not only do I need to understand how all the drugs work and know, you know the doses of all the drugs, but I'd also be a lot more involved in patient care um, and be on the ward a lot more and be patient facing a lot more or pretty much all of the time. With very little um, aspects of my role being involved, being involved in the dispensary. Mm -hmm. When I actually did the role, um, it was patient facing. Um, it did involve me to know, have a very, very good understanding about all the, how, all the, how all the drugs work, um, how the body works as well. So I got to touch on the human biology aspects again, but in real life. Um, the mental arithmetic again creeped up um, and there was a fair amount in the dispensary, but it's rightly so because of the way the thing, that things work. Um, what, I wasn't, what I was a bit surprised about is, it's a bit of a personal thing, but it's lack of quality of life. And I say that to, I, I, the reason why I say that is because um, at the hospital that I was working at, it was quite, the way that they had done their, um, regi their register, schedule. Rotor. Rotor. The way they had done their rotor was so that um, it almost worked out that because we didn't have enough staff, almost every week you were either working a late shift during the week or on the weekend to sort of supplement and help out with the team. Um, and after doing a, a year of that and also not living at home and being away from friends and family, it did kind of take the mental toll. Um, and I realized that, yeah, I don't want to do this for very long. So I started to th explore what other options I could do with the skills I have. So I